Good morning, Matt. What's going on, Rick? You, brother. Hey, listen, once again, uh, it's not what it sounds. I thought you were on those uh, Celsius. If you're audio only, I'm, lo- I'm still drinking my Zemus. Or, that we, was my, we need my to start era. start making money off of those, man. Well, we've talked about that on like every podcast, like every 10th podcast. I I'm know. Like, I need we, a sponsor. We talk about it. Did you, all right, so speaking of sponsorships, you see all the college athletes, you know, they're getting paid for endorsements. Yes. Did you see the Alabama quarterback? No. Has yet, I don't know if he's actually played maybe a down, a couple downs, whatever, sophomore or something. He's already estimated around a million dollars endorsements. Got a boy. I mean, I'm not against it because Hell I'm- no, but I, it's crazy, man. I know. <laughs> I'm pro open market and business, so I, I'm not opposed to it. There was one guy sponsored by Milo's Tea. I don't know if they got him like endless supply of sweet tea. I don't know. Well, that's good. I saw there was one guy. He's a good looking guy. I think he plays for USC. He's a receiver, running back. And he's got this really beautiful dog, like a husky with blue eyes. And he's always posting about he and his dog anyway. And so, got him? Uh, Petco, actually. Nice. Yeah, but that's that's awesome. Like, I love that stuff. And I think if those guys are going to, you know, if if someone's going to monetize their likeness, I think they should get paid for that, right? And that's what's been happening when you see the the you know, video games that come out. It has the minute. They don't get paid for that. I mean, it does solve the, hey, colleges aren't paying them, right? Like, I know there's some... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, sure. okay, so the colleges aren't having to pay because the colleges are making a lot of money off of them. Colleges aren't paying them. And you could say, well, they're giving them a free education. And that's a you know beer and peanuts conversation. We don't even want to start. But at the same time, I think if they can make money off of their likeness and in this day yeah, and yeah. age and be a social media influencer. Yeah. I mean, let's say that they weren't an athlete, but they were, he was an attractive guy that was really funny that created great content with a beautiful dog like he should be able to get paid for that regardless of whether or not he's an athlete so just the fact that he right. plays a sport would negate him from being able to do that seems kind of silly now i know the waters will get muddied by the fact that you know universities could you know like we should that. just do the whole podcast on this we'll just keep going <laughs> yeah. where's the random stuff we don't have to be about fitness at all we can talk about quite honestly anything <laughs> not intelligently but we can definitely talk about anything yeah. but you know what we're going to talk about since we talked about dogs and uh, reimbursement for college kids. Yeah, where, where is that taking us? We're going to talk about fear. Mm, fear. No fear. No fear. Yeah, no fear. No, we're going to talk about fear. And I think it, fear and why, you know, what I see, because I've been sitting in the franchise development seat, which is essentially sales, right? We yep. don't like to use that word, but franchise development for Been doing Alloy. a fine job, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. And when we have had some great traction lately, and we've got some great franchisees on board, and I'm really proud of that. But I'm talking to lots of candidates, and mm-hmm. I would say that the number one thing that keeps some people from you know, becoming a franchisee, which is essentially becoming an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. is fear. Yep. And I don't think it's because people don't know what they want. You know, I'm going to call bullshit on that, and this is for anybody I've talked to so far and anybody that we may talk to in the future. You know you don't want to be doing what you're doing if you're reaching out about an opportunity to do something else, right? And if you're reaching out about fitness, you normally see that there's a gap in the market. You think fitness is hot. You like fitness. I mean, let's face it. You know, if you're a controller at a mid-level company, you're probably making pretty good money, but it may not be your passion, right? And you'd much rather be at that cocktail party telling people that you own fitness facilities, right? And that you're an entrepreneur. It's a little bit of glorification around that. And so I think people know exactly what they want. I think they just are too scared to take the next step. Absolutely. 99% of what happens in a franchise development seat is that you are helping people mitigate risk and you can't do it a hundred percent, but you know, you're kind of talking them through, it's almost an emotional journey. You're helping them break belief systems and you're helping them understand that, yes, you know, you can own small personal training studios and replace, and in many cases exceed your current income in this corporate structure. But it's a journey for people, an emotional journey, and so you're walking them through it. So I thought what would be good today would be just to discuss what we see as the top three fears Mm -hmm. that I've seen yep, and maybe why those things are unfounded. And if they are rooted in some reality, then, you know, what what do you do about it, right? How do you overcome those fears? Right. So let's do it. You ready? And, and you've got those, yes. You made me a list today. This is I great. I made Matt a list to get him more involved. He's been really pouting about not having a bigger role. So I'm going to make him lists. I have a vital role. He has a honey-do list. My mic's bigger than your mic. Um, Easy. <laughs> yeah, so the first one you put down is a lack of knowledge. Yeah, so I think one of the fears is that people don't have 
the knowledge. So it's not that they don't think they're smart enough, but they don't think they have enough specific knowledge about fitness, right? Mm. Now, that could be that they, they will say something like, well, I don't know anything about fitness. Like, do I have to be a personal trainer to own a personal training brand? And obviously, the answer, as you know, through our lens, is absolutely not, right? Um, also, it's like, well, I've never been an entrepreneur before. And so, what are the other things that I need to know? Like, I don't know about real estate. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to build out a facility, right? And so, I think those fears are easily assuaged with a franchise package because like, okay, we're going to handle all that. We handle the programming. We handle the client communication tool, right? Which is right. the app that allows someone that isn't a ninja coach with an exercise science degree to execute our play, right? Um, it also allows someone who doesn't want to work in the gym, who wants to be an investor or a semi, an absentee or semi absentee owner to not have, I mean, they don't have to be a personal trainer, right? right? You just have to understand that we've got a process in place that will let you scale and that we have other things in place for those other lack of knowledge fears. Like we have a real estate play. We have a seven layer archetype built out for our clientele. We're going to help you put it in the ideal spot for our customer base, right? Um, we have a construction partner. They're going to run construction from soup to nuts. They know they get the mill work. They do the equipment ordering. They have the vendor relationships. They manage the entire project for you, just committing, communicating with you along the way to let you know how it's going, right? And I think a lot of folks that they don't know about franchising in general, they don't understand all the resources that it brings to you. And so that first fear of like, I don't know anything about fitness. I've never been an entrepreneur. You know, I don't know where to put these things. I'm not sure like you know, how I get my employees trained up. How would I hire people? That should be, if you're looking at it rationally, again, handled by the franchise structure because a lot of those things are done for you. And that's really what you're buying right. is a turnkey business you system. You get a lot of folks that not know, even know what happens in franchising to begin with? Well, I mean, most of the folks that we've had have been really smart. So they've been really savvy business folks. But mm -hmm. I mean, franchising is a specific you know, right. um, business in and of itself. And so they, I don't think they, they understand that there's a turnkey process or you right. know, uh, product, if you will, that's waiting for them. But I don't think they know what all's involved. Right. And I think there's a fear of like, well, if there's, you know, I've never done this, I've never opened a small business. And so, you know, what, what's this going to be like? And then when you show them like, hey, here's all the things we have in place for you to, right. to give you the best chance to succeed it should assuage some of that fear, right? Yeah. So that's number one fear is like, I don't have the knowledge to do this. I've never been in business for myself. I don't know about fitness. You right. know, it's like, you don't have to. Yeah. And you've been in here for 30, how many years have you been doing fitness now? 30 years. 30 years. I literally only know about fitness. Well, that, you know, well, I didn't want to say anything, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific knowledge base. <laughs> well, there's no better to person to take it from then. That's right. All right. Are well, you ready for number two? Sure. All right. This one, uh, you put down perception. Is that loved ones, friends? Yeah. So the perception would be along the lines of, you know, I think fitness has this stigma around it, right? So imagine you are working as a computer programmer and you're head of your department. That's a, a fine job. It's a fine, fine job. And you're <laughs> head of your department at your company, right? And you're doing really well. And and what, for whatever reason, society has kind of told you that you go to school, you get your MBA, you go get a job for a company, and then you work your way up, right? And then you get into your mid-40s, and you're like, you know what? This is not all it's cracked up to be. I don't even like a day in the life of right now. Um, I like the people I work with. Um, I like that I'm good at what I do. But I really want to go and do something else. And then you have the fear of the perception, right, that you're leaving a solid you know, job, which at the end of the day, like we can argue that no job is completely solid, right? right? Like you can get acquired by a larger company and through the economies of scale, your job is eliminated. There's a lot of reasons why working in corporate these days is different than it was when maybe, you know, like my parents or something were in corporate, you would work your entire life for the man, you would you know get your pension and your gold watch at your retirement party and then you were taken care of for life. It doesn't work that way anymore, not at all. And no. so... I would say there's probably not as much security as you think. And then there's the stigma of like, where well, you're going into the fitness business, really, because people just seem to think if they don't know better, that there's maybe not as much uh, money to be made there, which is absolutely crazy. Not it's, true it's at not all. A real job. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I remember when I first was opened this place, a personal training center and personal training was new in the defense of the people I was speaking with. And I would say, 
they would say, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm a personal trainer. I own a small facility. And they're like, oh, great. What else do you do? I'm like, well, that's pretty much it. You know, it's like your side gig, get a real job. Yeah, exactly. It's like, (laughs) what's your real job? Because it was so outside the box from, they immediately tell you also that they just ate a salad. Uh, yeah yeah I mean, are baby carrots bad for me like i start going there i'm like i'm out i'm out i'm leaving the i don't party. want to gym i'm out i'm out of gym yeah <laughs> never mind i'm in middle level management at a big corporation i work at ge so i think there's that stigma with friends and family sure. and you and you also there's that feel that fear of failure so like you don't want to be seen as a failure to the people you support and that's a legit fear so like if you're if you are taking if you're the main breadwinner for your family which I think several of our uh, franchisees, both female and male, are the main breadwinners of the family. They are pivoting to this and quite honestly putting everything on the line, right? To to make it because they have to create a certain amount of cash flow yeah. to take care of their family. I think you probably hit on all of them when, you, when we talk about these, but I think failure is probably got to be pretty close to the top there, isn't it? Yeah, Just, well, fear of failure overall, yeah. yeah but the perception of that. Well, when you think about these things, they like compound. So you're like, well, I'm not smart enough. And so like if I fail, then that makes me look dumb. And so it's like, okay, so that's a compounded fear, right? And then like, well, if I lose money, that means I failed and that means I'm dumb. So it's like, okay, it's just bam, bam, bam. bam. It just continues to pile up. But if you're not careful, right, if you don't rationally look at these fears and you don't break your own belief systems around what the business that you're getting into, how does it cash flow? Do you have skill set to do it, right? Um, does the company provide you with the, the gaps, if you will, in your skill set to be able to do it? And those are things you really need to be looking at. But I would say that most of these fears that we're talking about are, they're not irrational, they're understandable, but at the same time, they're, they're not really well rooted in reality. They're more just perceptions that people bring to the table sure. and they're common. So it's like, again, I don't have the knowledge. Second, like what's, what are my friends and family going to think when I go out and announce that I'm quitting my corporate job yeah. to go open some gyms? It's like, Oh, quitting. Right. Best of luck to you. You know what I mean? Or your kids are like, well, what are we doing? Like, you know, it's like, it's a, it, it it's one of those things, but if you don't believe that you can bet on yourself, right, to make it, then you can be, it can be crippling. And the thing I would hate to see, because I've only done entrepreneurship, so I come at it from a completely different lens. I've never had a job per se. I never even feel like I've worked. I really enjoy what I do, you know, and it's it's never a day. It, it sounds silly, but I've never really worked a day in my life. I really enjoy it. And so for me, it seems so odd that you wouldn't bet on yourself above and beyond betting on someone else, right? But at the same time, I understand why, you know, not everyone's wired the same way. Like, no. I mean, it's just, just, you know, different risk tolerances. I had the advantage of growing up with, you know, my father was an entrepreneur, so he made a lot of risky, you know, moves and he always worked really hard and made them stick. But it's like, you just get used to it. You know, your sure. tolerance of like, I'm leaving the big company to go start my own thing. It's just the way things are done. And not everyone has the advantage of that in their background. Yeah. So I get it. So. First of all, lack of knowledge. Second of all, you know, what's the perception going to be of you? Are you irresponsible? Are you having a midlife crisis? Are you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's a real fear for people. I think they're worried about what their, their friends and family are going to think about them. Yeah, and crisis. if they, and if they think, well, if I do fail, then the perception of me is really bad because I'm the one that put it all on the line and I'm a loser. Right. Mm-hmm. And then if you're not careful, you could, that just runs away with your emotions and pretty soon you're down that rabbit hole and you're never going to do anything. What I don't want to see though, is for people that, you know, I get them on the phone, they act like they don't know what they want to do. I can tell in conversations, they know exactly what they want to do. They're just scared to do it. Right. And so what, what I would hate to see, because I'm on the other side of it is for this person to get down the road, 10 more years to have not taken risk on themselves, right. Or taken advantage of an investment opportunity and they're in the same job. Maybe they've been downsized. Maybe they hate their boss now. Maybe a bigger company took over and they got laid off. And so they went to work for another mid-sized company in, a, in essentially what was a parallel move. You know, now they have a commute or something. It's like in all of that could have been changed if you just could have taken a calculated risk on yourself, yeah. period. Yeah. What's the cool. last one we got? Last one is no talent. Yeah. And I think this goes back to, and this is probably a bit redundant, but it goes back to thinking like, well, I don't have, I'm not a good leader. You know, I'll hear people say these things like I've never, I don't, I don't hire people like in my position. How am I going to find the right people? Like how do I, how am I going to get people to work for me? I'm not a good leader. I can't sell. Right. Like I don't do sales. I'm like, what does that mean? Everybody does sales. Like we're all selling in every interaction that we go into every day. So right. it's like, yes, you're always selling. Right. So I'm not good at this. I'm not good at sales. Like I'm, I'm, how about this one? I'm not in good shape. And I've heard that one a lot. It's like, well, I'm not, you know, I need to be really buff to be in the fitness business. I'm like, well, if you're going to be out on the floor working with clients 25 or 30 hours a week, yeah, you probably need to be in decent shape because you're going to be leading people. But I will tell you that if you 
are on a journey. If you're on your own journey and you're working to get better than you were and you were 50 pounds overweight and now you're only 20 pounds overweight because you're on a journey, that's a great person to be in front of people, right? Because you're you're living a lifestyle. You fully believe in it. You're coaching what you're currently, you know, you're drinking your own Kool-Aid, right? That type of idea. And so I think it's, it's again, a fear that it's just unfounded. Like you don't have to be buff to get in the fitness business. That's a silly idea. What about the, the talent aspect from more of a absentee owner? You can't find good talent to work your business. Well, I mean, you could say that about any business, right? That's, that's also an irrational fear. It's a legitimate fear in some ways because it's a, it's a reality. If you can't, if you could literally not find anyone, you couldn't run a business, but that's not necessarily just like fitness business. If you were to open a yogurt shop or a restaurant or an HVAC service franchise, whatever those things are, you got to have, you got to have a person, right? Right. You got to have a manager. Right. And it's the same thing with us. And so saying that I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to find someone again, it's like un irrational fears. It's like, you mean there's people out there that don't want a really great job that pays really well. That's fun to do. That doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Right. Also, again, part of the advantage of being with a franchise is that like, at least where alloy is concerned, is we try to give you the tools to help you hire the right people. We yep. can't do it on your behalf. You're the entrepreneur. You have to make those decisions, but we can help you by giving you resources. Right. So here's some sample ad copy for attracting this type of position, right? Here's a vendor that just does talent acquisition in the fitness space. Reach out to them. Here's a, a couple of screening tests that we use for employees that we find to be very effective. And we spent money and time to develop the roles that are in our Mm-hmm. business yep. within that that uh, screening process so that you can say, here's how someone's hardwired. Could they sell? Could they manage? Could they train? Right. So all those tools are in place. So if you if you just simply say, well, I don't want to do this because I'm too worried I couldn't find an operator. Again, I'm just going to call BS. It's like, well, then how do all the other successful businesses do it? Right. I think there's a guy here in Atlanta and he's a owner of one of the largest. He's a one of the he is the largest franchisee of a of a popular boutique brand. It's got like 140 locations. How oh. would he, how would he do it? Would he say like, oh, I can't do that because I'll never be able to hire people to go in there and work? Yeah. It's a silly <laughs> excuse. It's yeah. like you could say that about any business, right? right? The company you're currently working for would be saying that. It's like right. eventually, at the end of the day, you have to go and find talent and help and develop that talent, and we'll give you the tools, but you got to do it. Yeah. But saying that it's not possible is irrational. Yeah. I mean, you hear it all the time. And just like, I, I remember talking to a guy, a client we had, and he used to work corporate business, ended up buying, I think, a UPS franchise or something like that. And he, he told me one day, he's like, look, there's no job, no person in this world that is un- irreplaceable. They, somebody was always around, somebody else could take that place. And I was like, it makes sense according to these lines, right? There is somebody out there yes, that you can Of course find. there is, especially for a fun business <laughs> right. where you get to be sort of a rock star. You get to be in front of people. You get to change lives. We have a giving structure to our business. That makes people feel good. It's like, you know, there's so many things in place in fitness that make it a, a popular job. I was talking to somebody the other day who's in a different industry, and they're like, yeah, we're really struggling to find people, which you've read about in the media right now. And whether it's government aid is keeping people from looking for the type of service jobs that they're offering, whatever that is. Like, what about you guys? I'm like, not at all. We get we get introductions to people, and we get, um, you know, resumes all the time because yeah, – We're just getting unsolicited resumes. <laughs> yeah, all the time because <laughs> fitness is cool. It's fun. Right. It's like people want to work in fitness. It's not like we're selling, you know, widgets. We're selling life-changing, you know, habits and things that make you feel good. So fitness is probably the least difficult space Full to find help. side gigs. Right. <laughs> yeah, exa- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How's that mom's basement working out? Like, <laughs> oh, we're still talking about that. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that helps you guys. And those are just, again, my observations from developing the first 20 plus um, – you know, is just fear mitigation. So if you're a candidate of Alloy and you listen to this, you some of this will ring true. I would say you're going to have to break some of your belief systems. And uh, it eventually, I would rather you take a shot on yourself and the systems that we provide you than put all of your trust in, in someone else where you don't ultimately have any control. Boom. Thank you. All right, brother. Thanks. Thanks.